Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Playing World of Tanks. I'm AJ and today we'll be looking at a game that I had in my Panther M10 which is the German Tier 7 Premium Medium Tank. Now the Panther M10 is a difficult beast to play. It's not a tank for everyone. Um, it has really low penetration on its gun. It has Tier 6 penetration uh, with uh, 150 millimeters, and um, the couple of things it has going for it is very high fire rate on its gun and uh, you know pretty decent accuracy and uh, that's about it. Um, the gun is not the best part of this tank. Uh, most of the platform that is surrounding that gun isn't that great. Uh, but I tend to have decent games in it and tend to do uh, you know decent damage um, in most of my games. Um, so this is just a showcase of what this tank can and cannot do. Now I use coded optics on this tank just because I use it as a sniper um, and though it does not have the penetration it does have the accuracy to hit weak spots at the moment. Now this poor KV-3 unfortunately takes the shorter way into the city that uh, most people should not take. You should always try to take a longer road into the city because it is safer if there's a scout in the middle. He's going to scout you out and if there's enough TDs you'll probably not even make it into the city before you even fire a shot. So at this point, you know, I am taking most of my chances firing at the people that I see. I know my view range is pretty high in this game, um, you know, if I was any um, closer, um, you know, I would be spotted. Therefore, you see me backing over the ridge before I take a shot at the IS. It's because, you know, I don't want to take a chance of getting um, spotted, um, you know, and sitting in the open and taking shots from the enemy team. Now, as I correctly guessed, my view range was not sufficient. Uh, even though my view range was sufficient, my camo was not going to hold up against that IS, so I sort of started backing off. Now, at this point, um, you know, I know the city is going to fall. It's only a matter of time. They just have just more uh, tanks in the city. And, you know, I'm not about to, um, you know, sort of like, I, in this moment, I'm kind of like undecided um, as to what the next course of action should be. Um, if I stick around here, I can like provide more support to the tanks in the city. But at the same time, the valley uh, side needs help because of the amount of tanks that have been spotted there. So you see me like undecided for a couple of minutes trying to see, trying to guess as to what the next uh, you know course of action should be in my tank and uh, you know I'm thinking maybe I should stay here but then again I won't have really good shots uh, into the city and you know without exposing myself. The other choice is like I go valley and decide to um, you know stop the push there and you know, I'd spot the T-34 in the middle, I thought, you know, I would go and at least take him out and make it easier for people in the city to not worry about, you know, attack on their flank, but before I could do it, he already gets taken out. Now, I turn around and, you know, start heading towards uh, the, you know, valley because, you know, I know the city is lost, but the valley push needs to be stopped. We can't have two tank. we can't have tanks on two different flanks. Um, so, at this point, my priority is to take out the tanks have been spotted within the valley and this is one of the main reasons why valley pushes don't work is because defenders have a very easy time getting back to base. Um, there was a game I had in my E75 and I think I was halfway towards the enemy base and I saw a push coming through the valley and in the E75 I managed to come all the way back and you know defend the base so that just goes to show that you know it is not necessarily um, a good idea to push valley ever. So over here, you know, I first uh, take out the SU uh, that was sitting on the ridge, then the KV-13. Now I know that I mean, the valley uh, push is dead. Um, the tanks coming out of the city are going to be a problem. So I just uh, decided to take the, you know, a very defensive pos position where I can take easy shots at the tanks coming. Now over here you see me fire at the IS, that was a bad target selection choice, you should have fired at the Tiger which has weaker armor and is just as dangerous and if not more. And so now I'm gonna switch and start firing at the Tiger, you know, I load APCR ammunition because we are losing by a lot and, and you know I cannot afford to bounce shots now, I need to make all my shots count, um, you know, it's because like, you know, we are what like, um, you know, we have 
less than two four tanks or you know because of all the damage we have taken and you know the enemy has a lot more now over here the Jagdpanzer 4 gets a little overconfident and you know sort of like pays for it with his life you know I spot the IS you know and he's my next target I'm gonna start firing at him and you know I fire at the side of his turret and manage to take him out now the Jagdpanzer is the only tank that's left on this flank you know I am starting to sort of like uh, put shots into him as quickly as I can and you know he unfortunately just doesn't have the you know he just cannot reverse uh, quick enough to uh, not take shots now at this point you know I'm me and the Hellcat somehow survived and we have pulled off like holding off but that many tanks um, and so we decide you know maybe we should uh, go over here and look if there's somebody coming uh, the team 150 you know, he's firing HE at me, so, you know, I, at this point, um, you know, switch to, should have switched to regular AP rounds, I didn't need to fire APCR at that poor guy, but, you know, I managed to, you know, kill him anyways. Um, now, you know, from how the, uh, how the shell landed near the Hellcat, I kind of like know that the GW Panther is on the 09 line. And I took a shot from him earlier as well, so you know that also sort of like confirms that he is somewhere there instead of over here, you know. And so like I tell the Hellcat that he is over in that direction, and we need to sort of like uh, get him as quickly as we can. Um, you know, he is the only tank remaining, and you know if we take him out, you know we basically win the game. Um, so I mean, a couple of people ask me like in chat, you know, how is the Panther at ten? It's not a tank for everyone. You know, that's what I'll say. Um, it, it's a hard thing to make work sometimes. And, you know, um, if you are not experienced enough in playing medium tanks with bad penetration, um, this tank might not be for you. I sort of like specialize in playing bad tanks pretty well, as my friends like to like joke about me. Um, you know, I have really impressive games in the M48 and the FE-422 and I have not so impressive games in my Object 140 so I mean the thing is like it's just uh, you know whatever your comfort zone is um, you know you should go with that um, the Panther M10 is a very hard beast to master well um, but you know it is still a very decent uh, money maker in case you're interested um, you know, and not don't want to buy a tier eight because they cost a lot more money uh, than some of the other, uh, you know, some of the other tanks uh, in the game, like a tier six or a tier seven premium. But they don't nearly make enough money. Um, so we spot the GW Panther, and it's all it's just a matter of time before we take him out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next episode of Plain World Tanks.